and welcome to Sundry News for Friday, June 19th. Again, there doesn't seem to be a Daily Wire email coming. So, we start with the Daily Yahoo, brought to you by Yahoo News. The emerging face of COVID. Younger patients, more cases, but fewer deaths. Fewer deaths. It's clear at this point that more people are contracting COVID-19 in Florida, Arizona, and Texas. So why aren't more people there dying from it? Well, because it is not as deadly as people think that it is. Because these are all the healthier people that you made stay home when they could have just gone about their business before and contracted it or not and survived most likely because they're healthy. Just speculating. Will Smith says his divorce from Sherry Fletcher was the mo- the worst thing in my adult life. Will Smith touches on the ultimate failure of his divorce from first wife Sherry Zampino in the Father's Day episode of Red Table Talk. Okie dokie. I don't care. Wayne Brady feared for his daughter's life when she accidentally set off the security alarm at his house. Wayne Brady feared for his daughter's life when she accidentally triggered his house alarm and armed responders were called to the scene. Oh, brother. Woman uncovers unusual items abandoned by actress who lived in her house before her. A TikTok user named Rachel Turner moved into Bella Thorne's old house and it's just about as quirky as the actress herself. Well, since this is a TikTok user, I wonder how much of that is actually staged. Florida Representative Matt Gates reveals he lives with a 19-year-old Cuban immigrant whom he calls his son. Okay. Gates made the announcement after shouting at a black lawmaker over whether he understood the racism people of color face in America. Oh. Like that, huh? Leah Ramini reacts to news of rape charges against Danny Masterson. The actress and former Scientologist has shared her thoughts with the world following the star's arrest. Featured, revitalize and speed up your slow computer. Boost your computer's performance with one easy move. Free, asterisk, compliments of Yahoo. Speed up your PC today. What's hot? Oh, it's Yahoo Search again. Trending now, Juneteenth. Helen Mirren, Father's Day 2020. Katie Holmes. Michelle Caruso Cabrera, Steak Delivery Service, Alicia Silverstone, Medical Alert Systems, Silver Coins, Yolanta Umeka. So Juneteenth has replaced Black Lives Matter in the top spot, and Father's Day has replaced coronavirus. Cool. Ah, going... Over to 1440. Good morning! It's Friday, June 19th, and we're covering a surprise decision by the Supreme Court. Need to know. Communities recognize Juneteenth. Or Jubilee. Otherwise known as Jubilee, at least it used to be. I thought I like that name better. Jubilee. Today marks the 155th anniversary of the formal end of slavery across the United States, a commemorative day long celebrated by African-American communities and citizens across the nation known as Juneteenth. The Emancipation Proclamation took effect at the start of 1863, midway through the Civil War, changing the legal status for millions of Confederate slaves, though they still needed to escape to Union-controlled territory. When the war did end in May 1865, news of Confederate surrender was slow to spread. Texas, at the time a remote slave state, became the last to recognize emancipation on June 19, 1865, when Union Major General Gordon Granger read Order No. 3 throughout the city of Galveston. In the wake of nationwide protests, sparked by the death of George Floyd three weeks ago, the date has taken, an, had taken on added meaning, with a number of companies making the day a paid holiday. Groups have also called for the day to be recognized as a federal holiday, with New York and Virginia proposing to make it a paid day off for state employees. Spend a few minutes today exploring the National Museum of African American History's online collection. DACA rollback rejected. The Supreme Court ruled yesterday the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program must continue while the Trump administration reevaluates the justification for its termination. How... 
How have we? How have they not justified it yet? That can't be that hard. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the court's four liberal justices in a five and four decision, five to four decision. The Obama-era program defers deportation of certain undocumented immigrants known as DREAMers, an estimated 700,000 children and young adults who were under 16 years old when they entered the U.S. President Trump announced an end to the program in 2017, though the proposal has made its way through court challenges since. While the case has been viewed as a proxy in the broader debate over immigration policy, the court did not actually rule on DACA itself. Rather, the court concluded the administration violated the Administrative Protect Procedure Act, which provides guidelines for how to change executive branch policy by using arbitrary and capricious reasoning in its decision. Okay. The issue now returns to the Department of Homeland Security for further consideration. Unemployment claims stay at 1.5 million. Nearly 1.5 million Americans made initial unemployment claims last week, worse than the 1.3 million expected by analysts, and just under the 1.56 million reported in the previous week. It is the 12th straight week with first-time claims above 1 million, bringing the total number of initial claims to more than 45.5 million. Holy crap. Before the pandemic, the all-time weekly high was 695,000 in 1982. As we were saying, before the panic, the all-time weekly high was 695,000 in 1982. Analysts say the figures reflect a job market still dealing with the effects of the coronavirus overreaction. Despite every state in some phase of reopening, many businesses that deal in person with customers are operating at reduced capacity, spurring broad-ranging layoffs. Continuing claims, workers who have been collecting benefits for at least two weeks, a clearer picture of the current unemployment, fell slightly from the previous week to $20.5 million. A current boost to unemployment benefits expires at the end of July. At least one senator... Current boost to... Okay, at least it's going to end. At least one senator has proposed a $450 return-to-work bonus. That might be a good idea. Markets were mixed on the news, with the Dow down 0.2%, the S&P 500 down, up 0.1%, and the NASDAQ up 0.3%. Read about the different ways unemployment is calculated here. In the know. Sports, entertainment, and culture. AMC Theatres, the largest cinema chain in the world, to reopen 450 U.S. locations July 15th at 30% capacity. That is not very much. Dame Vera Lynn, be beloved British singer, best known for World War II era music, dies at 103. Wow. Colin Kaepernick joins Board of Directors of Medium, a blogging platform with 170 million monthly readers as their only minority board member, will create content on civil rights and race. He really does not need an NFL job. He is doing just fine. Science and Technology. Western Siberia experiencing a record-breaking heat wave with some spots reaching 45 degrees Fahrenheit above average. Oh. Wide-ranging study links air pollution and heat exposure to preterm birth, low birth weight, and stillbirth. Hmm. Machine learning algorithm helps create 3D model of an earthquake fault zone in California, showing a four-year series of earthquakes was triggered by fluids. Such zones have traditionally been studied in two dimensions. Light-activated CRISPR technique lets researchers make precision cuts in DNA in seconds while monitoring how the cell repairs the edited region. Business and Markets Carnival Cruise Line reports $4.4 billion quarterly loss. $700 million revenue is down 85% over last year. Expects to burn $650 million monthly during panic. Food delivery app DoorDash raises $400 million at $16 billion valuation. Data analytics giant Palantir raises $500 million from Japanese insurance company Sompo.
private equity-backed Albertsons grocery store kicks off IPO roadshow, plans to raise up to $1.3 billion. Huh. Albertsons is making a comeback. Politics and world affairs. California issues statewide order requiring face masks in public. Ugh. Order follows the state's biggest single-day increase in new cases at 4,084. See? Panic reaction. That's all that is. It's a reaction made in a panic. U.S. reports 2.19 million total cases with 118,435 deaths as of this morning. See three-day moving average. President Trump to hold first campaign rally since pandemic began tomorrow in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Facebook removes Trump campaign ad for using a symbol associated with Nazi political prisoners. Campaign says symbol is used by Antifa movement. Ah, background on symbol here. Senator Amy Klobuchar, Democrat, Minnesota, withdraws from consideration as vice presidential candidate for Joe Biden, urging him to pick a woman of color. Oh, how noble. How very freaking noble of her. In depth, African American inequality in the United States. So, we're looking back at history, are we? No? Harvard Business School, a comprehensive and data-centric review of the historical context of African Americans in the U.S., along with a look at discrete policies affecting them since the Reconstruction period. Uh Uh-huh. Night shift. San Antonio Express News. Oh, really? Follow along for 18 hours while the rest of a city sleeps, with frontline medical workers caring for the most severe COVID-19 patients. Okay. What if COVID-19 isn't the big one? Wired. When all is said and done, the coronavirus may kill close to one million people globally, causing trillions in economic damage. But zoonotic diseases have no set timeline and could strike again at any point. Can the U.S. muster a 9-11 style response before that happens? (sighs) With Mark Anderson, Observer Effect. One of the country's most highly regarded venture capitalists discusses time management, how to be productive, and how to set and achieve goals. Cool. The Cold Hard Truth, from The Constant, a podcast. In 1909, famed explorer Robert Perry became the first person to reach the North Pole. Or did he? A fascinating look at the race to reach the world's iciest frontier. Editor's note, hat tip to find that pod for flagging the series, which has become one of our favorite history podcasts. Etc. How 132 epidemiologists are deciding when to send their children back to school. I don't care. What it's like to eat inside Seattle's chop zone. Probably pretty shitty. The San Diego Zoo's baby pygmy hippo makes its debut. Aw, pygmy hippo, that sounds so cute. From our partners, are you looking for a meaningful domain name for your store? Uh, A dot store domain name brands your site and tells your customers you actually sell something. Click here to know more and use code STORE499 at checkout to get an 80% discount. Hmm. What the Milky Way looks like in the middle of the ocean. Don't miss the weekend's Ring of Fire solar eclipse. A rare giant squid washes up on a South Africa beach. A real-life fighter pilot breaks down iconic mid-air movie scenes. Take a trip in this terrifying space balloon. Clickbait. A man known for his dad bod... Bad dad... Okay. Dad bod. It does not say dad bod. A man known for his bad dad jokes is on the hunt for the worst of the worst. Okay. History book. First recorded game of baseball, 1846. Baseball great Lou Gehrig, born, 1903. Happy birthday, author Salman Rushdie, 1947. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg executed for espionage, 1953. Happy birthday, actress Zoe Saldana, 1978. Rest in peace, Coco the Gorilla, 2018. Aww. Free speech is the whole thing, the whole ball game. Free speech is life itself. Salman Rushdie. Okay. All right. Now we have a little extra something from Yahoo. B 
Because Yahoo, like many outlets, just can't help, you know, just can't help showing everybody how virtuous they are, how, uh, how noble, how moral they are. But more so than that, they want to force their morality, their nobility, their virtue on everybody else. So we have Yahoo celebrating Juneteenth. Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, marks the end of slavery in the South on June 19, 1865. Learn more about this day in this special edition newsletter and read more about Verizon Media's commitment to social justice and racial equality in this open letter from our company CEO, Guru K. Gorapan. what I say? Their morality. Support grows for Juneteenth in wake of George Floyd protests. Juneteenth has received more attention than usual as the flood of recent protests across the U.S. has called for the recognition and appreciation of black lives. So, you want to learn about Juneteenth? The holiday which commemorates the end of slavery in the U.S. has been celebrated since the late 1800s. The day is also sometimes called Juneteenth Independence Day, Freedom Day, or Emancipation Day. But probably mostly just Juneteenth, just as... Independence Day keeps getting called July 4th, even though it's Independence Day. Celebrating Juneteenth amid protests and the pandemic. Amid nationwide protests against police brutality and racism, the effort to celebrate and recognize Juneteenth has gained strength. Why? I don't think they're worried about the uh, panic, the pandemic, the pan pandemic panic at all. It doesn't seem to be affecting any protests or riots so no not really any reason to address that trump rally why is tulsa's history so allegorically powerful trump campaign officials knew that planning a rally in tulsa oklahoma on juneteenth a celebration of african-american emancipation was offensive they just didn't know how offensive yeah well it got moved to tomorrow so stop complaining bitches freedom is still long overdue Juneteenth 2020 is different. You have freedom. The only freedom you don't have is what you do. That the, the, only, the only constraint to your freedom is what you put on it, is what I'm trying to say. In response to the recent killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd, speaking of Breonna Taylor, there were things that weren't talked about and weren't known that were actual facts. She, she was actually a person of interest in the case that they were doing. They did not go to the wrong place. They meant to go to her house. And they actually did knock. And probably if they hadn't knocked, if they had actually done the no-knock thing like they had the warrant for, she probably wouldn't be dead. That's all. It was a lie. Uh, in response, blah, 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 protests have spread worldwide, and awareness for Juneteenth seems to be at an all-time high. John Lewis Doc offers Juneteenth Tulsa screenings to counter Trump rally. The special screenings will be free and are intended to serve as a bit of counter-programming to President Trump's political rally on Saturday. Because if you celebrate Juneteenth, that must automatically put you in opposition to Donald Trump's rally. Because if you have to question whether or not you're going to vote for Joe Biden, then you ain't black, right? Right? If you, if you maybe wanted to go to the rally, I guess you're not black then, huh? You don't care about black emancipation. You don't care about the end of slavery because you like Trump. That's just mutually exclusive then, huh? Black Americans continue fight for equality on Juneteenth. You have your equality! While historically Juneteenth has been a day for black people to celebrate freedom, over time many viewed it as a day to mobilize and gain the liberties they are denied. Just what liberties are those? There is no law or rule that gives you any less liberty than white people. 
a lot of it is what you deny yourself by your attitudes, by what you teach your children. You deny your children the same comfort that, that white kids have by what you teach them. And then they take what they've learned, and when they have interactions with police, they do stupid shit and get themselves killed. I know that is not always the case. I know. But plenty of white people also get killed by the police, by police brutality. Okay? Police sometimes make bad decisions whether they are interacting with black people or white people. It is not about racism. 99.9% of the time. More white people have been killed this year, this in the past year, than black people by police. That's a fact. You are taking your own children's liberty by what you teach them. Activists pushing to make Juneteenth a national holiday. Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee introduces a resolution to recognize the historical significance of Juneteenth every year. For 2020, she also plans to introduce a bill to make it a federal holiday. Okay, that's it. That's it for today. Have a good day. Happy Jubilee, because I like that name better. That is what... um, It was sometimes called back in the day. I read that on another thing. It's in the uh, sports, the sundry sports video. So happy Jubilee to all y'all. Goodbye.